All right, guys, Felipe here, my boy Puebla. We've actually hit a couple of reps already, but he challenged me. He said, hey, if I can beat you in a tire flipping contest, can I get 15 minutes with you? That got my attention. So he challenged you, we're gonna go back and forth. Yup. If I win, I leave. If he wins, he gets to ask you 15 minutes worth of questions. Here we go. Let's get it. Yeah, not yet. I'm good. He got it. He won. What's up, you guys? It's Felipe, uh, Rat Race to Five Mastermind Group. All right, so my boy Puebla here reached out on IG. He slid into my DMs and uh, he challenged me to the gun show. There he is. I think he won. <laughs> um, so my boy here said, hey, if I can beat you in a tire flipping contest, then I want five questions from a rookie to a, what would you call me, guru, mastermind head, guy that invests in real estate, good friend, guru, whatever. Guru. No, not a guru. <laughs> All right, so he was like, hey, if I beat you, can I get some questions in? So, rookie to investor wants to know some questions. So, you beat me, fair and square, we're here in Florida, it's a nice day outside. <laughs> what, what do you wanna know about real estate? Let's start with the basics. So, if someone's looking to get into real estate, maybe has some knowledge, not too much, sure. not too much experience, where do you say they should get started? You know, I get this question a lot and my advice is always the same and I think people should educate themselves before spending money. So a lot of the times, uh, it's kind of like buying a car. You're not just gonna go to a car dealership and you know, any, any, mighty mo, or that one's my favorite color, I'm gonna pick that one, right? Yeah. Real estate's kind of the same way in that you should educate yourself before you get to the dealership and figure out where it is you want because you're gonna get the best deal when you know what you want, whether mm -hmm. it's, um, for example, do you want your time back? Do you want cash flow? Are you a net worth type of guy? Are you looking to be a millionaire? Um, you know, for example, me, my goal was cash flow. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't worried too much about becoming a millionaire. I was more worried about, you know, can I have the cash flow to sustain the life that I want? Mm -hmm. So how do, I, how do you get started in real estate? What should you do? I think you should educate yourself and focus on your goal. Like, what is your goal? For example, you're a fitness guy, right? I mean, you're a fitness Correct. guru, you know what you're doing. Um, and, and, and I'm sure you tell people the same way, like what's your goal for fitness, right? We're not gonna sit here and do a thousand squats if you're trying to get bigger biceps, I don't, <laughs> right? So yeah. it's the same thing. It's identify your personal goal, figure out what that is, and then reverse engineer that process to where real estate can give you that goal, right? Because real estate is not the goal. The goal is time with your family, mm -hmm. money, health, whatever your goal is, and then you just use real estate as an avenue to get there. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, Good answer, Eric. Time for question two. Um, there's like, you won't really learn real estate, you know, all the ins and outs in school. So like, yeah. how do you recommend going about finding a coach or guidance or, you know, some type of mentorship for someone to really like keep you accountable and teach you how to do everything? Sure, so, you know, I always answer this question the same way. And I say there's tons of guru courses, there's tons of um, content out there, there's tons of people you can follow. But I feel like if you're gonna find a coach or a mentor in real estate, then you should probably um, ask, so for example, at Rat Race to Fi, it's where we teach real estate. What we do is we give our mentees, people like you who wanna join, uh, direct access to us, right? Because it doesn't do you any good if I'm selling you a course that you can just watch, and yeah. then there's no actionable steps, I believe, in courses. So if you are in my mentorship program, I personally mentor you, hey, you're about to put that property in the contract, let's make sure you get the best inspector so we can have an in-depth look at that property, right? Mm -hmm. So in Rat Race to Fi, what we do is we give you direct access to me and Diego Corzo to where you can ask us any question at any point that you want. A lot of these masterminds that you guys find on the internet, uh, they give you a course, they give you very, very limited, if any, access to the guru, and what happens is you end up just learning how they did it and never being able to apply it to your life. What if I'm a single mom with three kids? I'm never gonna be able to grant Cardone the mess out of an apartment <laughs> complex, right? So we have that in Rat Race. We have single moms with two kids that are learning from us and taking action. So how do I find a good coach? One simple question really will take away all the BS. And that's how much access will I have to the leader of the group, hmm. right? Like do I have their phone number, their cell phone? Do I have direct access to them uh, You know, at, at reasonable hours? 
Um, and, and, and that's what I would say. Before you join any group, ask how much, how accessible are they to me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, that makes sense. So no one-time limited sales. Yeah. Never, never hear from them again. It's like one thousand dollars. Yeah. No, none of that. Okay, no, it's like, do I have a cell advice. phone number, man? Is there a Slack channel or something that I can talk to them at any time, ask questions? And we have all that at Rat Race. Awesome. Yep. So if you were just starting out from scratch right sure. now, lost everything, and I guess it does depend on your goals a little bit, but what strategy would you think is the best to start a podcast? Absolutely. Real estate? So that answer comes back to the, what's your goal, right? So for example, there's people that want to have a high net worth. Like I want a $5 million net worth in the next 10 years. How do I reach that? It's the bird strategy, hmm. buying properties, fixing them, putting tenants in, refinancing, getting all your money back out and then redoing it, right? And that sounds sexy, but that's not a cash flow game. That's yeah. gonna give you a hundred bucks per, per door. You gotta have a thousand doors to have 10,000. I mean, it's just <laughs> like, it's like you don't wanna have all those problems. So it's depending on your goal. For example, back to the thing, mine was cash flow goal. So I use the HELOC strategy, which basically means I have a house, I, I pay it down to about 40% of its value, and then I put a home equity line of credit on it, and then I can use that money to buy my next property, I refinance that property, pay off my HELOC, and then buy another one. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna have a high net worth, but I'm gonna have a high cash flow, right? Yeah, so I don't have to keep working for down payments. So it's more about what's your individualized personal goal and using real estate to reach that goal, right? So if you're like, well, I wanna have a high net worth, then burr. Hey, I wanna have high cash flow, then use the HELOC strategy. Hey, I want to uh, you know, scale a business, then you know, uh, use all the, all the money that you're making towards hiring property managers and things like that. Hmm. So it all depends on what your goal is and then picking a strategy that complements that goal. Okay, makes sense. And let's say, let's give you a top three. I'm gonna put you on sure. the spot. Let's do it. Top three people you would say to, or channels to listen to, you, just to get knowledge on real estate. You know, Absolutely, so started. definitely Felipe, Rat Race to Five, <laughs> my YouTube channel, that's number one. Um, no, I think there is some really good content out there. Graham Stephan puts out good content. Um, instead of person, I'm gonna say a couple books as well. Um, I would go with a book called Life and Air. I would go, like Millionaire, but Life, <laughs> Life and Air. I would go with a book uh, that's called uh, The Richest Man in Babylon. It's a great oh, book. Yeah. You can't not say Rich Dad Poor Dad, so Rich Dad Poor Dad, <laughs> absolutely. And then, you know, a lot of people leave this out, but I think taxes are really important. And I'm not saying learn them, but just learn how it works. So there's a book called Tax Free Wealth by Thomas Wheelwright. <laughs> it's a fantastic book, and it really educates you on how to keep your money. Because there's two things. There's making money, but then there's also keeping money. And I think you would agree in fitness that there's there's it's a hard turn to get fit, but it's just as hard to keep fit Correct. and stay fit. So it's the same thing with money. It's really hard to get it, but it's just as hard to keep it because everyone wants it. So you need to be able to make it and then keep it as well. Hmm. Um, another person that I would definitely follow is my man Diego Porzo. He is super humble, super undercover, doesn't do a lot of videos, but if you can find his podcasts, if you can find his TED Talks, he gives a ton of wisdom and a ton of knowledge. Um, so those are some people and places that I would follow, for sure. Awesome. Yep. So um, I know a big concept in real estate when getting started is using you know, OPM, yeah. other people's money. Yeah. How would you recommend going about it? I mean, I can't just go to my neighbor, hey, you got you, you got 50K for me? <laughs> That's really cool. Um, you know, honestly, it's proof of concept or education. So if I'm gonna use OPM, other people's money, I need to be able to bring the deal and explain how it works. So even though, even if you've never done a flip, you know, you can calculate AR $5, and the, the two dollars that I need to fix it out, we can split the three dollars by one and a half, one and a half profit each, right? Yeah. It's the same thing, but just add zeros. 500,000, a million, it doesn't matter. If you can bring the data to somebody and show them how a property is gonna work, then boom, I mean, anybody will let you borrow money, including myself, right? So like you say that you flipped a couple mobile homes. If you're like, hey Felipe, here's a $10,000 mobile home, it's gonna sell for 20,000, it needs $2,000 to work, dude, I'm gonna fund you immediately, Yeah. <laughs> right? So that's the concept of OPM, but you gotta have confidence. If you yeah. can't come to me and be like, hey Felipe, I think I, think I, I might, think I yeah. might <laughs> maybe have a deal, right? So that's not how that works. Yeah. You need to be able to uh, be confident, be able to show and, and compute what you've done on the back end and prove it to somebody with money. Because I promise you there's way more money out there than deals. If you can remember that there's more money than deals, you will be successful with OPM. Okay, awesome. Yep. So I got another question. A, bon a bonus. A question. bonus. One. I, I got Fire six around. questions. Let's go. Um, in terms of you know leveraging, you do want to use OPM other sure. people's money as much. Sure. But like you said, I did flip a couple mobile homes. I want sure. to get into rentals. I want some cash flow. Would you recommend I go conventional, put twenty percent down on a, you know a big home, and it takes a lot out of my pocket. You know, I might have to put like forty k out of pocket sure. for closing costs and down payment. 
and you know I lose some of my own liquidity, but then I finally get a rental. Or what what approach do you recommend for this? Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about it really quick. What's your goal? Oh man, I, I need to ask myself that some more. Sure. I mean, I was thinking about it more in this conversation. Um, is it cash flow? Is it net worth? Is it building a ca portfolio? Cash flow. Guaranteed cash flow. Cash flow. Twenty percent down on every property. Okay. And leave your money there. Yeah. That's it. That's simple. <laughs> if you want it, but but. But you have to really identify that. And now we're getting personal. Now we're yeah. like, the camera's gone. Like, you really need to figure out what it is you want. Because a lot of times we say cash flow, but we're not willing to put that money in and we're like, want it back. Yeah. So you have to fight those demons within yourself and say, what is my goal? And, and you're not going to be able to answer it in a 10 minute video. You yeah. need to really like think about what it is that you want and how you want it. And for me, I had to come to terms with, I'm okay with not having money, but I want cash flow. And those are two mm. different things. Yeah. Okay. Super good. Yeah. So. When you make that decision, you'll know what strategy is best. And I think if you really do just want consistent cash flow, like ten thousand dollars coming in every single month, then just put twenty percent down on all the homes, and then you're gonna have a low mortgage payment and a high cash flow. Makes sense. That's okay, it, awesome. guys. This was awesome. Um, super, super excited to have my hair boy here, and we gotta get one more for the show. Let's get hey. it. All right, guys. We'll for see you thumbnail. soon. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, guys. Make sure you hit the like button. Leave me a comment if you like these. I'm gonna be doing more around, more more of these one-on-ones with people, just you know, people around. If you want to be one of them, just leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, reshare this, and we're just gonna get it back into the gym. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it.